Oh, dude, this is one dense computer. Hey, welcome back to Tech Shinji. In this video, we're gonna figure out how much power we can cram into 7.2 liters. If you guys have been watching my channel, you'll know I've made the Dual Kingpin 5950X Ultimate Port Royal Killing Machine. But I wanted to know how much power can we cram into a mini ITX platform? Enter the DAN case. For those of you that don't know, this is one of the smallest mini ITX cases on the market, coming in at only 7.2 liters. Paired up with that, we're gonna be using the NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti Founders Edition. If you saw the unboxing of this card, you would have noticed that I found out that this was actually gonna fit inside the DAN case. That's why I chose this card for this build. For our processor, we went with the AMD 3950X Ryzen 9 16 core 32 thread processor. The reason I chose this CPU is that it's got a ton of power and a small package. And of course, we're gonna need cooling for all that power. And that's what we have over here, which is the Asetek 92 millimeter radiator. And this is an all-in-one uh, AIO cooler with a copper base plate, all that good stuff and all that. But a lot of people have been wondering if that's gonna be enough to cool this fireplace of a CPU. We'll find out in this build, of course. And for our storage, we went with the Western Digital Blue two terabyte NVMe storage drive. Western Digital has been pretty good for their storage, so that's why I went with that one. And for the fans in this case, we're going for some wonderful Noctua, unique ones though, 92 millimeter, 14 millimeter thick fans. These are the thin kind that'll fit within the confines of this tiny case. And for our memory, we're going with 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 3600 megahertz memory. For our motherboard, the X570i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi by Gigabyte. And for our power supply, we have the Corsair SF750 Modular Power Supply. This is one of the highest wattage power supplies in the SFX form factor at 750 watts and is one of very few that is 80 plus platinum rated. And you guys might be wondering, Tech Shinji, what is that little piece right there? Well, let me show you. This, my friends, is a 24 pin special custom made cable for the Dan Case A4. You will realize later on in this video why I have this and how much frustration and time this one little cable is gonna save. So now you guys seen all the parts, we're gonna start the build. Phil, cut to a montage. What do you mean I don't have a Phil? This is ridiculous. How do you expect me to work in this kind of environment? All right, so this is a pain in the butt, as we all know with mini ITX builds, but I finally got everything in here. 
finally mounted the power supply, finally got all the cables in, everything's basically mounted. The only thing left I gotta do is put this uh, Asetek pump cable in and get a blousing strap, which I'll show you what that is, and mount this tube down so that way it doesn't pop out and pop the side cover off. Just wanna go over a few things regarding the cables. As you can see here, real close, if you look real closely, this 24 pin cable is kind of jammed between the motherboard and the very bottom of the power supply. See the top of the fan and the bottom of the power supply? Remember, there's power connections plugged in. You can kind of see it there. There's power con connections plugged in that make this distance even smaller. So it's really tight. That's why this 24 pin cable from P Slate Customs really helped out in this situation. I couldn't imagine doing this with a full length 24 pin cable. Right here, we got the CPU EPS cable routed right underneath, going all the way to the motherboard right here. We're gonna clean that up in just a second, make it look a little better, but that's the basic routing of it. Got our fan cable going right to the CPU header right over here. And over here, I know this is gonna be really hard to see, but you can see this is our PCI cable. PCIe cable. It's a single PCIe cable going to the other side of the machine to power the graphics card. So it's plugged in right here, jammed right in there, comes out through the front of the case right here because this whole area is a void. So you can mount a SSD here if you really wanted to. So the cable is routed up through here and goes to the other side to, oh, surprise, 3080 Ti RTX Founders Edition right over here. Then the PCIe cables come in and we gotta clean this up a little bit, but that is the custom mounting cable that can adapts it to a dual eight pin PCIe. This is the NVIDIA 12 pin microfit connector. So this is how we're gonna get that in there. The only thing I'm kind of concerned about right here, there's a fan and just like this one, there's a fan on the other side and it might get choked. As you can see right here, we have almost no room for this fan to breathe. So that might cause a little bit of a problem. We'll have to see when we cross that bridge. And as you can see right here on the bottom, you can see that that is the remainder of the EPS uh, cable for the CPU. Another thing I wanted to point out is right in here, if you look really closely, specifically right where my finger is, right there. Right there you can see that is one of the uh, ports leading off the AIO radiator. As you can see, the radiator is at a off angle. It's not mounted straight. The reason for that is we needed this right here to clear the back of this 3080 Ti Founders Edition. It is very long. In fact, I could barely fit one finger in here on the other side. So that allows us the clearance we need to mount this card correctly into the PCIe socket right here because unlike other um, riser cables, this does not have a clip to hold it in. Because if it did, you would never be able to get this out because you cannot access that. It's really difficult. So I just wanted to go over some common problems a lot of people have with the 92 millimeter Asetek AIO, specifically on the Danny Case A4. So when you route the tubes, in my opinion, this is one of the most efficient ways to route it. A lot of people are able to get it under the RAM um, I can't ever really make that work, at least not in this orientation. So what I've done is I made it go over the RAM, and of course we're using LPX Corsair DDR4 memory, so the LPX stands for Extreme Low, Low Memory Profile. I put a browsing strap right across to put pressure down on the tubes to keep it off the side panel and doesn't pop out the side panel. What a blousing strap is, is basically a rubber band coated in cloth with metal hooks on the end. And since it's just cloth and rubber, it's non-conductive, so I'm not worried about it rubbing on anything I don't want it to. I do have to make sure to make it uh, avoid all the pins and stuff though, so it doesn't hit anything or touch anything that we don't want to bend. Well, there you have it, folks. We got it all in this tiny little 7.2 liter case. 3950X, two terabyte NVMe SSD, a 3080 Ti, and 750 watts of power in this tiny little case. And of course, just for size reference, that's a 3080 Ti Founders Edition box. You know, I've always wanted to try something. All right, guys, I got my For The Win 3 3090 Ultra in here. And um, I'm gonna do an unboxing real quick. 
And just uh, take the tab out and come out. This is actually a new type of GPU. It's very heavy, very dense, very powerful. Open it up. Let's take a look at this new GPU. Oh, psych, it's not a GPU. It's the entire dang computer in one little box. All right, guys, so there you guys seen it. We put everything inside this tiny little box and we got it all in there. It was a pain in the butt and struggle, but we got it in there. But this is the end of the video, guys. Make sure you get subscribed and hit that bell icon because we're gonna do a part two where we see how the thermals work on this tiny little heat box we got here. Because remember, guys, we got a 3950X and a 3080Ti Founders Edition, two very hot components. So we'll see you guys in the next video, guys. Take care. Bye.